Our Shalom Salantana and I Stalin Shalom Lekum Salam Le Nanta Yuhum May Yeshua Salam May Yeshua's Yesus's Shalom be with you all. Shalom is very, very important, my brothers and sisters, because Shalom means more than just peace, as we have it in the Western um, Eurocentric Gentile mis translation. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's one level of it. If you look up the word shalom, you'll find it's very interesting. Shalom actually means health. It refers to our health. In the true tripartite of the true trinity, because remember man, I and I, was made in the image and after the likeness of the true and living God. But Adam, our so-called first father, he had fell. In other words, the fall of the black man and the rise of the black Moshiach, of our black Lord and Savior, Ketachina Med Hanatachin Jesus Christus. So we come full cipher in that prophetic um in that prophetic word of the King of Kings and his Christ and this this I trait right here that I showed um for the hundred and twentieth. This is by a brother, I think Abba Yehuda or Brother Yehuda. Or uh, formerly known as Issachar or Isachar. This Rai said and has, hopefully, is still in the land of the living, has some skills right here and so we utilize his particular artwork. The Overstand, which comes from ancient Ethiopic um iconography. In fact, we have to get on a whole campaign to print and distribute these images. You understand these true images of our faith, because these are teaching tools, and when they're whitewashed, you understand that's a lie. You understand when you look at the Ethiopian church today, you know, we ask the question about the Ethiopian church. It's not the point of this particular um, Torah portion or this particular. Actually, it's Shabbat Shalom, Sinbat Salam. We're about to move into the, this is the so-called, still Friday, so-called afternoon. And um, we're going to heal up I-9 brothers and sisters, the Wendemoche, Wendemoche, the Chitoche. Um, we know the word Wendem refers to... Um, Wendem refers to brother in the Amoric, in the Amharic, in our pure language. Well, what's the word for sister? What's the word for sister? The word for sister is echit, echit or echit, echit. In the older form, it's more echit, that gurgling sound. But within Amharic, it's acceptable to say echit, echit. So if I say echite, Hite means my sister, as we say, Wendeme. Wendeme means my or I brother. And these are important greetings for I and I as we begin to um, study and we begin to learn and we begin to grow. And most importantly is that language. Remember what the prophetic word in Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 9 to 10, it says, For then, in a particular time, space, and dispensation, he will turn to the peoples a pure language. So I and I, the lost, the once lost, but now found, Beta Israel, a pure language, the royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus. In fact, brothers and sisters, we have um, um, good news. You know what I'm saying? We didn't want to announce it just yet because we're still waiting on the shipments and just confirming all the orders, but the Metaf Kedus of His Majesty, the um, Bible, we found a uh, distributor, Ainai Echit, Ainai Ehitiye, my sister, in a more affectionate way, we may say Ehitiye, 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 also Ehitiye, so it comes from Echit, Echit, sister, Ehitiye, or Echite, or Echite, or Echite, or Echite, or We're going to go through that, um, some of the greetings and some of the, um, I wouldn't call it a title, but it's, it's an important description as we say brethren and sistren. It's very important for I and I to begin to learn and, and to study, to learn it, and also to apply it, because we apply it. And I'm really very, very happy and joyful, nine-nine brothers and sisters, 
because I see ones and ones are picking up. You understand, and it's not I and I, but it's the Holy Spirit. You understand that we give thanks and praise to Abba, to Abba Tachin, in the name of Gia Tachin Jesus Christos, for that ones and ones can receive it, ones and ones can um, be even further motivated to to receive that inspiration of the Holy Spirit from within themselves and the fellowship gradually, S the S, little by little, it is growing. So this is the Metzav Kedus right here, a, a smaller version of it. We're, we're actually ordering, I think there's three different versions of it. You probably know it from this particular version right here. This is one of the larger versions. You can see the, the seals right there, the Metzav Hafit. The Metzahafik Edusit. You can see it right there in the light. Those seven seals, Revelation 5 5. Now, um, on the dry erase board, you still have the first principle of the word of Jah. You know what I'm saying? We touch on repentance, we touch on faith, faith towards God, faith towards Jah. And, and we left off on the baptisms on the baptisms, and this is all based on Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5. So my brothers and sisters, hopefully if you have an opportunity, some might be listening to this, and, and some of the brothers and sisters are also finding ways to even put out these teachings, to put these teachings on CDs or DVDs and to distribute them, and if one distributes them for a certain fee, or not a fee so much, rather for a donation. You understand in whatever local area that can be basic foundation for the outreach. You understand there's nothing wrong with the ministry, you understand receiving, you understand fear and equitable monies in order in this world to propagate the good news. Which one is more important? Salvation or this so called um funny money? You understand it so happens we don't have faith in it, but this is what we need in this particular dispensation, you understand, to do that particular work. You understand, these things are disposable, but the good news is forever. So we have to recognize, and I give thanks for those who have willingly contributed, donated, ordered, you understand, prayed for I and I, reasoned with I and I, encouraged I and I, and even when necessary, um, critique or, you know, question certain things in order to get a clearer Overstanding. Now, Brother Manley, Wendy Manley, your question was very interesting about the internal, the internal judgment. I want to touch on that. But before we move forward to even get into this Shabbatical, this, this Senbet week's Torah portion reading and feeding is actually, is actually a double portion. It is, um, if, we, if, if I know is correct, it is Matot, I think, and Masai, or Masai, Masai, my told it's a double portion. This is why now we have um, all five books, and we're about to complete this particular. This is the Torah portion right here, the um, Ben Midbar, the Hebrew book of the Hebrew book of Numbers. Now, when we check out the Old Testament, right? The Old Testament is the New Testament. I want you to take note of this. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So if we're going to build I and I house, you know what I'm saying? Because Jah, Jah people, Yah's people, Jah wants I and I to reign. But he knows that we must first study to show I and I selves approved. In other words, we must know. We, we can't just be zealous and we have zeal, and that zeal, if it's properly guided by that knowledge, yoked in an application, when we know what our standing is in the Moshia, and, and we know our identity of who we are, this kind of links with the next reasoning concerning the black and the white, or, you know, the questions of, of white rosters, or what do you think about white rosters, or what do you think about Hispanic rosters, or what do you think about rosters from over here? You understand? And there's these particular questions which might seem new to us, but as we study the Word, we get to recognize that those before us, even in the time of Hawari Apollos or the Apostle Paul, 
has these very same questions. So if we would ground I in ourselves, you see, we need that groundation. So there's a couple of um, reasonings that we like to deal with, right? We like to touch on, as it were. But we want to complete this right here because we've got baptism. Now, as you know, there are three kinds of baptism, or there are three levels of baptism. Really, really the baptism is basically one. It, it, it's a principle. It, it's spiritual. You understand? But we have to recognize our true tripartite being. Because when we recognize our true tripartite being, what do we mean by that? That man is that man is spirit, right? He has a spirit. What is that spirit? What consists of that spirit? Man has a a a soul, a, a psyche. You understand? What is the soul? Do we really know? I, I will admit that Years ago, coming across these ideas, we hear spirit, we hear soul, and we see how it's used even in translation in a different sense. But if you really can't define what is it that it's talking about in the Word, your, your, your thoughts, you understand, even your faith, you understand, is, is not, is still in, in the, it's not in the knowing the truth. He says we must have faith, we must trust Him, we must admit in Him, but we grow. You understand? We need to grow and we need to mature. This is why we're touching on these, um, on these, uh, these first principles of the Word of John. So let's let's see if we can go through this and complete this part of the teaching right here because this will be a part of the um, the John people destined to reign. We are destined to reign. We are destined to rule. And what we're going to do in this particular is a very very interesting very interesting um, lecture. It's a very interesting study. You understand now? Now, we know that he is king of kings. You understand? And we know that he is lord of lords. And the father and the son is one. You understand? Now, the difference of dispensation of roughly 2,000 years, that too is very prophetic. You understand? But now, how do we build? You understand? How do we build this order? You know, this order which truly is after the order of Melchizedek. But then the question comes in. Ones would ask, well, what about Bobo? Bobo Shanti, they speak about it like this, or this particular group of Rastafari, so forth and so on. And how come we're not united? Well, I just gave you a key earlier. And the key earlier was from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. So we have to define, first of all, who is this people he's talking to? And if we recognize ourselves as the once lost, but now found Beta Israel, the so-called proverbial um, prodigal or the black sheep of the family. Another lecture we wanted to touch on was to ask the question, is Israel, is Israel truly in her land? Are we truly in our own land? Or has that prophecy concerning Israel and the scriptures truly been fulfilled? Now, this also connects with the whole idea of the church on one hand and the lost sheep or beta Israel and that restoration. Now, many, many, many Christians believe that the Jews who call themselves Jews, speaking of the European and the Khazarian Jews and what they see over there in the state of Israel, they believe, according to their Christianity, a Western Gentile Christianity, they say, well, everything is just about fulfilled. We see Israel in their land. I was listening to a, a pastor, a preacher, one who even inspired or motivated um, some of this topic matter, because we saw how, it's a brother, Joseph Prince, we saw how Joseph Prince, he's Singaporean, and how he spoke to his people, and how he teaches people, and how he get into the the Hebrew was very, very, a few times we saw his, his program, and we kind of watched a portion of it. I don't know whether it was not too very good a sermon, or at least we didn't receive that much. We turned away from it. And recently, we started to watch it more, more often, because he was very impressed in that sense with the fact that Christ and the love of Christ and the Word has so motivated this one to even teach their people at a very deeper and a very spiritual, metaphysical level, you understand, but keeping to those basic principles. But his program is destined to reign. So no doubt you understand that we were inspired by that. We said destined to reign. That is so very true. You understand that the scripture really says that we are destined to reign. We look at Revelation 5.5. 5. 
before we continue with this, let's just go to Revelation 5.5 5 to prove what we mean by destined to reign. Yovas. And when we see other nations into this word, it should not offend us. This is why we have to study and show I and I selves approve. So where they minister this word correctly, you understand, we can rejoice with them. You understand, we can, we can fellowship with them. And where they do not, you understand, we can, in the love of the King of Kings and his Christ, point to the word, point to the testimony of Yeshua. You understand, as we are to do. You understand, I mean, this is the basic teaching, you understand, of Christ and the whole principle of iron sharpened iron. So we have to get a couple of matters correct. So the first thing is, what does it mean in the scriptures that destined to reign? Well, first of all, if you look at Revelation, it's very interesting in Revelation. Now, this also connects with the chapter that we've been studying in Hebrews chapter 5, and we're at the top of Hebrews chapter 6 with this particular um, numbering right here. We touch on repentance, the first principles, repentance from dead works, faith towards God or faith towards Jah, and baptism. Now, we know I put three times here, not so much three times in the sense that you are being baptized in the water three times. You see, the mikveh or the mikveh bath, it is symbolic. You'll say, now this goes to Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old revealed. Now, which manifestation are we in right now? We're in the new, but the new is what? The old revealed. So as we study from the old and the Torah portions, it's very important to keep that in mind. You'll say, we read the scripture, we may think that we have eternal life, and it does not mean that we do not have eternal life, but in what order? Recognizing, you understand, recognizing Yeshua in the script, recognizing Christos, the Moshiach, recognizing the black Messiah, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the whole world has been deceived by Caesar Borgia's, by the counterfeit image, by white supremacy. Almost the whole world really believes when you put a picture of a white man with blue eyes and long hair, they almost indubitably would say, oh, that's Jesus. But then revelation reveals the truth. So now concerning I and I, you understand, this is, this is what's so very important. You understand, when we speak to black sheep, the lost sheep, you understand, of the house of Israel, so-called Afro-Americans, African-Americans, so-called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds. You understand, when we speak to so-called West Indians and Jamaicans and ones from the Caribbean, when we speak to our brothers and sisters from Central and South America who may speak the Hispanic or uh, Hispaniola, not Hispaniola, but the Spanish, they may be called, quote, Hispanic or Latinos, but many of them even recognize their Beta Israel connection. But now it connects with that blackness. That Ethiopianness, we have to recognize. We have to recognize that Ethiopianness is key, because scripturally, biblically, even Zephaniah chapter, chapter, um, chapter three, verses nine and ten, it points that it's from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. My suppliants, even the daughter of my disperse, shall bring mine offering. So the question is this: Is Israel? Is the true biblical Israel? in her or in their land. Are we? Now, now there's a very interesting overstanding to this. Because if they are already in their land, like so many Christians believe, then this word should be fulfilled on those all points bulletin. But we recognize for many points and many reasons it's not. So we're not going to regurgitate that particular point. Now, this is not to say that there aren't some who have converted to Judaism who might not be our color, they might not be our color, but in spirit and in truth, they might be our kind. But we need to have the spirit of wisdom and discernment in his word to recognize who's who. And I can show you straight through this revelation where it says that, that ones who call themselves Jews will come over to you and will bow down and recognize that he has loved us. 
You know what I'm saying? But there's others who, you know, every man has a right to decide his own destiny. But what we need to do is, first of all, recognize, are we called? You know what I'm saying? And have we chosen to become obedient to the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ? That's the key thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the key matter right there. So right here, speaking of we are destined to reign. You know what I'm saying? When we deal with the whole subject matter of foreordination, foredestination, predestination, all this is scriptural. All this is biblical. All of these are studies. So what we're trying to do is give a basic overview right here, continuing with this, um, I think this will be what, the fourth? This will be probably the fourth part of Ja people destined to reign. Right? So what we're going to speak on right here is, 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 is Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 where it says Johannes, which means the grace of Yah. So we know we are saved by what? We are saved by grace through faith, through our imnet, through focus on the Amen. He is, Yeshua is the Amen, and we must have that imnet. You see, the imnet, studying the language and linguistics, it's like saying the imnet is the she part of the Amen, and the Amen is he. So when we read in the scripture the, the, the marriage of the lamb, you understand the marriage of the lamb, that is our um, subjective faith, you understand focusing on the object of our faith. That's why Christ said, Yeshua said, you read the scriptures and you think you have eternal life, but these are they which testify of me, you know, saying which testifies of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So here, Johannes to the seven churches which are in Asia says, "Grace, grace. What's the first thing? Grace. What is grace? Grace is undeserved favor or merit. But when we study now, sega, sega, sega also r relates to gifts and riches." We find that embedded in that particular word. So we are saved by what? His grace. But his grace also refers to a richness. You know saying? A richness in spirit, a richness in soul, and a richness in body, a richness in our health, a richness in our wealth, a richness in our finance. Now many folks and folks of I and I folks don't even recognize this is there. But the King of Kings, Adamawi Haile Shalaseh, he is a manifestation of that. In his time, we find there to be shalom in his time. We find that there's, there was peace and prosperity in, in his time. We find that in his manifestation, his visitation, there was honor. But once they turned their backs, you understand, and not their faces, once they went backward and not forward, we can see the difference. The contrast is so clear that proves this word in real time. So John to the seven churches which are in Asia. He says, grace be to you. So the first thing is grace and peace and shalom from him which is and which was and which is to come. So we have another picture of the triune God of of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but the triune God, who is not three gods, as the heathen and the foolish and the Ishmaelites say, but he is one God. You know what I'm saying? He is one. Now, of course, a lot of folks have a lot of questions about that, but just notice right here. It might not say Trinity, but it says from him, which is, so the, he is the one who is, and which was, he is the same one who is now, is the same one who was, and which is to come. So he is the same one. So, so time, you have to overstand that time is not a, 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 an illusion that stops him from being who he is both now, both yesterday, and tomorrow. Now let's overstand this. So this is John's, John's message, it's John Salamta, it is John's peaceful greeting to the churches, the seven of them which were in Asia. 
He says, Grace be to you all, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. So it's another way of him saying that grace and peace be to you all from the triune God. You'll send from Shalase, from Salase, from he who is, right? He who was and he who will be. All right? All at one and the same time. Not three different. You'll say not three different. Not three gods, but the one. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So he is, he is the one who is, was, and will be. And there's seven spirits now before his throne. And from Jesus Christos. And from Jesus Christos or Yeshua HaMoshiach, who is the faithful witness. So who is the faithful witness? Right? Is it Peter, Paul, or John? No. The faithful witness is Yeshua. Yeshua is that faithful witness. These are they which testify of He. He who is, who He is, Yahweh, Yah. Yahweh. Right? And the first begotten of the dead. Look at that. He is the firstborn from among those who were dead. It's like before we are born again, before, before repentance, right? And repentance is connected with that rebirth. Before we are born again, right, we are dead. We are dead to this spiritual knowledge. Some of y'all may still be a little bit dead, but are awakening up to this. You know what I'm saying? But he is that firstborn. You know what I'm saying? So he is our big brother, Yeshua HaMoshiach. We don't fear I and I big brother. Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yesus Christos Gaitachin, he is our big brother, he is the first begotten, the firstborn, right, the firstborn from among the dead, all right, because he took on I and I flesh, you understand, he was crucified, he was, he was, um, died, laid down his life, another point, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we'll say Yeshua was murdered, you know, some of us will say, oh yeah, Jesus, they murdered Jesus, not really, and who being faithful to the word, he says, no man taketh my life. He does what? He lays it down. So how could he be? They thought he murdered, they thought they murdered him, but they did not murder him. So this is conflict. Are we to have faith in the word as the king of kings instructs us? Or are we to just keep babbling on loosely about things we heard? You see, if we go on things we heard and don't study these things for ourselves, that is another good definition of hearsay or heresy. You know what I'm saying? So in the last days there would be heresy. Everybody says, yeah, I heard this, I heard that. But what do you know? You know what I'm saying? What, do you, what have you studied in order to know? You know what I'm saying? This is very, very important. This is crucial. This is the foundation. And it says, and the prince, he is the prince or the governor, the Geji, the governor of the kings of the earth. He is the one who governs the kings of the earth, the true kings of the earth, recognize Gietachin Jesus Christos as their governor. The false kings of the earth don't recognize Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in spirit or in truth as their governor. So here is also wisdom. You understand? Let us understand this. It says, to him that loved us, he did what? He loved us. You understand? Now, in particular, we have to recognize that he came for the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. He took on this Ethiopian, this black flesh, because he loved us. Now, someone would say, well, what do you mean? He didn't love other people? We're not saying that. He was putting matters in their proper order. He was in first to the Jew, the black Jew, the Hebrew, the Ethiopian Hebrew, and then to the Gentiles. It's important that we recognize that because this question, once again, of what is the role of the Gentiles or what is the role of white people or European people has come up again or what is the role of non-black people or non-descendants of enslaved Africans, lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean. What is their role? So now we have white supremacy. The reaction to that is black supremacy, but let's not forget Jah is supreme. You know what I'm saying? And let's not forget that we are Jah's people. Let's not become hypocritical about that. So if we are Jah's people, you know what I'm saying? We have to be with children. Are we obedient children? 
or are we disobedient children? We recognize those other nations were disobedient, but we also have to recognize that we too, you understand, our, us, our ancestors, see, the, the, the opportunity to choose is ours right now. This is our and I generation to choose. This is why this message and these mess. This is why when I even look on, you know, now we're on the Facebook and I, I and I have to, you know, give thanks to, you know, all the Wendemoch, Yovasan, and the Hittoch who are assisting us with that. Both um, Hebrews, Black Jews, Yovasan, Ethiopian Hebrews, as well as the righteous among the Gentiles, Yovasan, regardless of whatever nation, Yovasan, but see. We have to recognize that if we are destined to reign, we must learn how to rule. You know what I'm saying? In, in Jah, because it's, it's through Jah that we are destined to reign. Apart from Jah, you know what I'm saying? We can just look at the past 400 plus years. We can look at, you know, um, the fall of the black man to the present time and recognize that something went on. You understand? The white man, the European, the Roman, the Greek is not greater than Jah. It's not greater than our Father, our God, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Black Messiah. They're not greater. But you see, we were in a breach. You see, we needed the kinsman redeemer. You understand? That kinsman redeemer to come to us, to buy us back as a national group. But first, Yeshua, the Son, was sent, you know what I'm saying, as the salvation, the eternal salvation for I and I soul. Now, what is the soul? I, I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. You know, you need your tools, brothers and sisters. Please invest in the Schofield, the good Schofield reference Bible, um, especially the old Schofield reference Bible. Um, you can download it at the, you know, on the study page, LOJ Society, the study page. But it's very good, I would strongly suggest as a basic foundational book because a lot of the references in here once you you know sometimes we have to pray because we not may not be inclined to reading and studying you know it might be a strange thing ones might like listening to the videos or watching the vids so forth and so on and might skim or scam you understand some of the word for themselves but really may not have gotten themselves into that real study mode you understand where they take the book pen to paper and they actually give time it's like if you love someone right if you really love someone and you have an opportunity to give them time you know what I'm saying? normally people would now who is overall is it not Jah? is it not the one who sustains our life who gives us abundance you know what I'm saying? and life even more abundantly you know what I'm saying? who rises up us up from the the lease from from the dung heap you know what I'm saying? And sets us on I and I ancestors' thrones. You know what I'm saying? Even the thrones of the house of great King David. But even so, do we know how to reign? The question you have to ask yourself, and this is the question I've asked myself, if right now we were given the kingdom, the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, would we know how to reign? Would we know how to rule? You understand? Know Do we even know how to rule ourselves? You understand? Know even self-control. You understand? Know and, and you know what I learned? It's not so much by your effort, like by the so-called human effort. It is really by the amen and the imminent. It's by the faith. You understand? Know I mean, when we truly understand how faith operates on the real level and when we truly have the testimony of the word so then we can meditate on it it's all always not clear fully you know what I'm saying? but you you have to get familiar with it you know what I'm saying? you have to get familiar with it and the key thing I was telling the, um, one of our nice sisters sister Christina Christina to you all to Mikael to 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 dad to your dad and and, and all you understand in the name of I and I Father and His Christ to you all because it was a good um, brief reasoning that we had a little text message and um, the sister was just reasoning with I and I and um, you know sometimes we we might get a little so called confused a little bit sometimes we might not see it all and need a little bit of clarity 
And I just remind the sister that James, James chapter 1 is very, very important. Already I got a couple of scriptures right here, but let's just go to James chapter 1. You understand? Some people say, hey, when you're studying, I like to study, but sometimes, you know, you're all over the scriptures. Well, that's how you have to rightly, you know what I'm saying? That's how you have to rightly, um, as, it, as the Bible says, divide or explain the living word of truth. So here we're in James, the general epistle of James. You know, it's the general epistle of James. So if you have James, you can pause this, get your Bible, get James. You know what I'm saying? Get your journal, you know what I'm saying, a composition notebook, your debtor, and begin writing, begin making notes of this. Even if you're going to study afterward, take down the verses, take down some of the scriptures, and study it to find the truth for yourself. There's no other, you know, there's no other easy way than this. Besides what I is about to show you right here, what the word says, the word says right here, this is James or Jacob, Yaakov. And it speaks of the testing of faith, how faith is, is tried and tested, and the purpose of testings. Ya'ako, a servant of Ha Elohim and of Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, Salamta, Shalom Lekem. This is interesting right here in James, it's New Testament, and James is greeting how many tribes? He's greeting 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So even in that first century Christianity, there were 12 tribes which were scattered, which were at that time, and they said this is roughly the year before the year 62 A.D. So in the roughly that time, there were tribes scattered abroad. Now we know some of where the tribes are in, in, in Africa, you know what I'm saying, in Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying, in, in Nubia, you know what I'm saying, and formerly in Yemen, you know what I'm saying, in Arabia, you know what I'm saying, the Lemba people is a testimony too. And there's also other tribes that have been scattered in other directions, you know what I'm saying, because the Bible teaches they were scattered to the four winds. That's why I ask you, is Israel truly in their own land? No, we are not. This is why we're speaking of exodus and repatriation. So we have to recognize the true prophecy, you know what I'm saying, from the counterfeit, from the false, from the pseudo, you know what I'm saying, so we don't get confused. So it says right here, he's greeting the 12 tribes, right, which are scattered abroad. He says, my brethren, count it all joy. Count it all joy. In other words, account it, like the book of Numbers is about numbers, is about accounting and accountability. So count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Now, this, this is, really seems difficult. Because you say, well, how am I going to count it joy? You see, if you're studying in the Word and you're growing in the Word, you begin to recognize both where you study and where your real-time application is. In other words, it's where the rubber meets the road. You see, if you don't really study and seek to find the truth for yourself, and it's like, it's like putting in um, wealth by putting the word and learning the word and getting familiar with it. The first level is to, is to get familiar with how it sounds and what it's saying. You know what I'm saying? The first level is not really to get your master's degree just when you read it one time, but it's to gradually, as, as the teacher of the master, gradually to grow and to gain a firmness in it, to gain a familiarity with it. You know what I'm saying? So that the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit now become or be received in you, it will guide you, will speak to you out of this word. You'll find yourself going back to the, or forward to the scripture saying, oh, you know, you get a meditation and you'll, you'll check it or hopefully use some of the Bible software and the key words to find that particular verse or check your notes on something. When that, when that vibe or irate begins to manifest, you understand? And it will manifest if one remembers consistency and, and, and practice makes perfect. You, will one slip? Will one fall off? Even I and I have so-called slipped in our regular discipline or fell off, so to speak. But you have to recognize that. You understand? Not get on this devil game and shame and blame and all of that. But recognize that. Recognize that in the, in, in the innermost. 
you know what I'm saying, to your father, to our father, say, Abba, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, to give I and I, strengthen I and I, send your Holy Spirit to I and I, you know, and, and guide I and I, you know what I'm saying, guide I and I in your word. You know what I'm saying? This is why we want to read this right here. Let's just go through this. So he says, he says, count it all joy. He says, knowing this. He didn't say believing this. He didn't say guessing this. He didn't even say thinking about this. He, said, he says, know this. Now you know the things you know. You know what I'm saying? You know there's some things that you know. You might not even have all the so-called evidence, you know what I'm saying? But you have enough evidence to know certain things. You know, sometimes people get caught up on that double-mindedness, that yay, yay, nay, nay, so forth and so on. You, you know, they're being devil's advocate. Don't be a devil's advocate. Let the devil advocate for advocate for himself. Be be, be Jah's advocate. You know, saying be Jah's disciple. You know, saying that means learn of him, learn of his word, grow in faith, begin to fellowship. Then we can begin to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? And to do those things and fulfill those things which are testified, you know what I'm saying, which are the expectation for those of Jah's people who are destined to reign. So it says, knowing this, that the trying, the trying of your faith, you see, your faith will be tried. It says, the trying of your faith, it, it works what? It worketh patience. You know, in Revelation it says that patience is the faith of the saints. That, 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 that patience, it says, he who, um, he who um, leads into captivity must be taken to captivity. He who lives by the sword must be died by the sword. And it says, here is the faith and the patience of the saints, of the Kedusan. We are the Kedusan. You know And basic principle, Rastafari, this Nazarite, you know or that relationship to that Nazarite ship, which says when, when, Either male or female of Beta Israel shall vow a vow of a Naz, a Nazar or Netzer, they shall be separate. That idea of being separate. You have to separate that which is produced of Jah from other things. You got to begin even in your, it begins in the mind. See, it all begins in the mind, even before really getting to the heart. Because you may feel certain emotions, inspirations, but if you're ignorant of Jah's word, you have to be very careful. You have to test those things. That's why it says that the trying, right, of our faith, it works, patience. But it says, and here's the key, verse 4, James chapter 1, verse 4 says, But let patience have her, have her perfect work. You see, sometimes we be in patience with Patient would be impatience with the gradual growth. You know what I'm saying? The gradual, the gradual building up. You know that ye may be perfect, but you mu you gotta let patience have her perfect work, so that you may be perfect, perfect in Abba's sight, perfect in Yeshua's sight, and entire, wanting nothing. That may not be wanty, wanty, licky, licky, yummy, yummy, greedy, greedy. Those vibes begin, so you can see through the patience, that begins to purify us. It's like I used to say and still say that a diamond, a diamond is made by pressure. That a diamond is made by pressure. You cannot have a diamond unless, unless that, that, those, those rocks, those special rocks go through an incredible amount of, of pressure. But this is what produces that crystalline structure. It's like gold. You understand? No matter how much you put gold in the fire, if it is gold, it will remain gold. It's a noble element. So the, the, the trying of our imminence, the trying of our faith, this is what works that patience. And when patience not have that perfect, have the perfect work, we are entire. You know, since our tripartite, the spirit, the soul, and the body comes into alignment. This does not happen overnight. You know, saying there's no easy formulas to it. A lot of folks look for an easy formula. You know, saying even the holy Aishans is not an easy formula, especially if one is not guided by this word. You see, you enter into the spirit world or, 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 the, or the heights. You know what I'm saying? And there's all sort of, you know what I'm saying, spiritual forces. You must 
be guided. You must be born again. You must have a change of mind. You must have faith in it towards in the direction of God. Now that faith is not really our faith. Here's, here's the key, brothers and sisters. The real idea of faith, we have our faith, but really we are hitching our faith. We are connecting our faith with the Son of God's faith, with the Bain Ha Elohim's faith. So in other words, it's not so much I and I faith, but it's I and I faith that he has faith, you understand, to do all that he has accomplished. That he has faith in his God, our God, in his Abba, our Abba. You understand? So it, it, it's, it's not, you know, we're saved by grace through faith. You understand? Know and that's not of ourselves. It's not of what we do. So at least any man should boast. So it's not because, oh, I and I read them hard. Oh, I and I got books. Oh, it's not because any of the things, oh, I want to, I met this word. No, it's not because of any of those things. You understand? Know it's because of faith in Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? In the Son of Jah, in the Son of God. Is this not the teaching of His Majesty? You know what I'm saying? Is that not this the principle for unity? You see, some people think that the verse, and I want to touch on this, uh, Brother um, Brother Wendell Manley, he gave a verse, five, what was it, Marcos uh, 3.25, and it says, A house divided shall not stand. And many people say, well, yes, you see, a house divided, I not, but Rastafari, you understand, the true Rastafari house cannot be divided. You understand, Christ, Yeshua, cannot be divided. The King of Kings, Kedamawi Ha'alasalat, Abata Chin, cannot be divided. But we're going to explain why there are these divisions, why there are these isms and schisms, why there are these particular factions and differences. You understand? Don't think it a strange thing. You understand? Don't think it a strange thing. But that point right there, we're going to hold that because it will be better for us to get into that particular teaching on its own. But just right here, this is, this is a reminder. Verse 5, it, 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 here, here, we get, here, here we go. If any of you, if any of you lack wisdom, does any of you all lack wisdom? You understand? Everyone who thinks that, well, they might lack wisdom. I, and I would say that, yeah, I know certain things, but you can never get enough, you understand, of John's wisdom, of John's wisdom. You have to understand. So if anyone that says lacks wisdom, what, what are they to do? You understand? Worry about it or feel bad about it or say, well, that brother or sister, they got wisdom. I don't. I guess that's a gift. No, 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 no. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Igziabihir. Let him ask of Ha Elohim. Let him ask of Abba. Let him ask of the Father that giveth to all liberally. He giveth to all generously. You understand? And he doesn't upbraid. You understand? He doesn't upbraid them. You understand? And it shall be given him. So if anyone lacks anything, especially say wisdom, and wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs teaches that. Proverbs is the basic book. Ones and ones need to be studying on a daily basis like the Mesmora Dawit. In fact, after one does their daily um, um, psalms, whether the morning psalms or the evening psalms, they should try to find an opportunity to read at least a chapter, a chapter of Proverbs. Go through it often. Go through it regularly. You understand? Learn what they really mean. If you have youths and children, learn it so you can speak it to them at the right time, at the right moment. They might not always it. But you always, when they grow up, and Jah willing, they do, they'll remember that word right there. So these are just a, little, a, a couple of points, a couple of hint, hints, but the Holy Spirit, Jah willing, will guide you into all things. Verse 6, it says, but, here's the key, here's the but. Here is the so-called big but. You understand? But let him ask in faith. What are we talking about? Let him ask in faith. Let him ask. In the same faith that Yeshua Ha Moshiach, that Jesus Christos demonstrates to us in this testimony. You know what I'm saying? In the same faith that Kedamawi Haila Selassie also testifies to, that faith in Yeshua Ha Moshiach, our blameless creator. 
You understand? For he has created in us, you understand? He's created in us, through faith, a new heart. You understand? A new mind. You understand? And in the fullness of this dispensation of time, even that glorification of the new body. You understand? That glorified body. You understand? So when I and I is Rastafari, we say, you understand? That I and I not die. There's a principle to that. But the principle to that is found in the keys, you understand, of the scriptures, found in, 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 in the, in the Wengel, in the teaching, and through the teaching of His Majesty, and the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach. But it says, but make him, or allow him, make him ask in faith nothing wavering. You know, like if you're going to pray to Abba, and, 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 and the order of prayer is to Abba, as, as, as a newborn, if you're in that legionette, if you're in that adoption, you cry out, Abba, Ababa, Abba, Abba Kedus, Be Jesus Christos, in the name of Yeshua, you ask for this or for that. But when you ask and when you pray, don't think like, oh, I wonder, does he hear me? I wonder, am I going to get it? You know, as, as soon as that happens, just say, you know, exil to Sahara and the Christos, like, just forgive me. Get all you could have done. You know, just forgive me. You know, it's like, let me come again. You know what I'm saying? Repent that thought. Have a change of mind. Have to resend that. You know what I'm saying? Have to resend. Don't, don't even send that out. You know what I'm saying? If, if any so called doubt or wavering, you know what I'm saying? Because the key to receiving is when you pray to the Father in the name of Yeshua, it's not to doubt. It's not, see, prayer is a resource. You know what I'm saying? Prayer is a resource um, more valuable, you understand, than almost anything. You understand, than anything, you understand, in this life. With probably the only exception is life itself, but yet true prayer, it sustains, protects, it blesses the life of the, of, of the prayer, you understand, the one who prays, you understand, as well as those whom that one in true faith Praise for so let's not forget prayer. You know we you know we, we sleep on that fact. There's all kind of warriors, but we also have to develop into prayer warriors. You understand? Have to develop into prayer warriors. Your prayer is very very important. You understand? To take take Jah at his word. It says if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Jah. Let him ask of Ha Elohim. But see, here's where pride and ego a lot of time gets in the way. You'll think of one who say, well, I, I, you know, I really don't need, uh, you know, you know, they would not think to ask. You'll think they would not think to ask. Even sometimes when I and I is reasoning with ones and ones or, you know, um, sometimes questions, ones will bring questions that I might have never thought about before. It's just not in the way or the perspective that they, you know, brothers and sisters, like, even when you're right or you ask questions or leave messages, you know, and it's interesting because sometimes I'm reading a question and I'm thinking like, wow, I'm not familiar with that perspective on it. But what I'm doing in my soul is I'm praying, I'm asking John for that answer. I'm asking Abba, if, 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 if you please, please give me an answer to this or to that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't think like, oh, maybe I won't find it. I don't know if I'll be able to. You have nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. That's just what means that's what it means when it speaks of firmness. You see, some people can be firm and physical on the outer level, but are you really firm in your in your in your soul? Are you really firm in, in, in the spirit of your mind? You understand? In this true and living faith, in the teaching of his majesty, and in the testimony of his Christ, of the black Messiah Yeshua, Hamoshia Gitachin. Jesus Christos. But it says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth, he who is, 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 is wavering, shaky, you understand? For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. It's like a wave of the sea. You understand? Like a tsunami or like the choppy waves, like these, these boats that be going out there getting rocked. You know what I'm saying? Wave of the sea, driven with the wind, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive, he shall, he shall not, 
he shall not Kabbalah. He shall not receive anything of Adonai. So if we pray to the Father in the name of Adonai Yeshua, Adoni Yeshua HaMushiach, and we begin to doubt, wonder, or waver about it, don't think you really, it's almost like you, you waste your time. You basically waste your time because the key, the key is faith. You're saying the key is faith. So you might wonder why do we, why we're teaching so much, always connecting it with faith, trying to give examples, go into the scripture, because we have to understand the fullness of this. You know what I'm saying? And different ones of us might need to hear this truth or that truth to, 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 to put the missing piece to that puzzle in their head and their heart. This is why the study of the word is really, really very important. And those who, who do it, as Christ says, those who do, you understand, um, the word and the will of the Father, they will know. So the best way to know is to begin to learn it. As you begin to learn it, to, to, to begin to do it and, and apply it and practice makes perfect, as it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, the test that your faith will go through, it worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting or lacking, not lacking anything. You see, a lot of folks, because of how the society is 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 uh, is, is um, so called how it is, this world that we are passing through, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. It always makes people feel like you're not good enough. Oh, you don't have enough of this. You, you're not good enough. You understand? Um, you need more of this. Or you need to be like that. Oh, so, so it always puts in, it reinforces that Satan's game. That Satan's world game. It's to put in us this lack, 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 lack. But John says, and His Majesty affirms to us, that through Christ we have all things. And His Majesty gives us a perfect manifestation and testimony. You know what I'm unlike anything that I and I have seen or humanity has witnessed since the days that Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Son, walked the earth. This is why we can say, in that sense, it's the second advent, you know what I'm saying, or that manifestation of John's Word, that manifestation of revelation that we're about to touch on right here. So it says, a double-minded man, you see, a lot of us suffer or have suffered, rather, from double-mindedness. Sometimes they'll creep in. Sometimes they'll creep in. Sometimes you'll find that you're walking just fine, spiritually, ironically. You're walking just fine. And then, you know, something will creep in. And you have to know how to respond. You can't just, you have to respond with the word. You know, like I often say that John, he's not obligated to our tears. He's not obligated just because we black. You understand? And Yeshua is black. He's not obligated because of that. He's not obligated because we say we're going through suffrage. He's not. Ob the only thing that obligates John, you know what I'm saying, is his word. When I say obligates, it, it is his word and faith in his word, but moreover, faith in the living word, which is Yeshua HaMoshiach, his beloved son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? So let's let's over let's stop playing games with Rastafari. His Majesty's teaching is, is so blatantly clear. And those who those who will claim to be Rasta or Rastafari or love Hala Selassie and can't receive that, they are hypocrites. If they can't receive the teaching of His Majesty, then what have they received? So that's what when people say, Well, why can we all unite? Rastafari the true and the faithful brothers and sisters in the house of Jah cannot be divided. The house of Christ, the Beta Christian, the true Beta Christian, it cannot be divided. You see, when the Bible says that they went out from us to basically demonstrate and manifest that they were not of us, you know, you get wolves, you get wolves in sheep clothing, and it's not for us to get all condemnatory. You understand? It's not, but it's for us to recognize. You understand? Know recognize in that love and that humility, but recognize, you understand, know both the spirit and the truth of the matter. You over so John's house cannot be divided. Remember that. See, for us to even think that John's house can be divided. You see, the Almighty gives 
man, humanity, free will. Some say that was one of the things that irritated the devil, irritated Satan, or the being that one calls Lucifer. That irritated him. That man had free will. You understand? And some say that, that Satan learned something by that free will. But it's that free will, you understand, that he seeks to, 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 to um, redirect, you understand, as it says, uh, do what thou wilt. But when we pray our Father prayer, is thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Well, think about it. When you pray that prayer, through whom do you think he intends to do his will? It's through I and I, John's people. But see, if John's people is not on the receiving, you know, if they're not receiving that, you know what I'm saying, but receiving a lot of mixed up moods and attitudes and, 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 and um, faulty doctrine, you know what I'm saying, that, that might have a pretense, you know what I'm saying, of iriticality or spirituality or even religion, but doesn't agree with the word, you know what I'm saying, of the scripture, and most importantly for us, the teaching of his majesty, which points us, you know what I'm saying, to the scripture, which points us to the true Savior, and even in his majesty's own demonstration, you know what I'm saying, we know of that Christ man, that, that it says, uh, Mark, the, 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 the perfect man, the fulfillment of that man is shalom, is shalom, all the days of his majesty are shalom. You understand? So we get a powerful testimony there. Let's just recognize that. So let's just go on this up to this point right here. So it says that a double-minded man is unstable. One who is yay, yay, nay, nay. One, one, one who is yay and nay. Make your yay, your yes is yes, your no is no. And if you can't say yes or no, say, hey, I got to think on that. I got to pray on that. But make your yay, yay, and your nay, nay, when it's yay and nay, well, maybe, you know what I mean? That's instability in all of one's ways. You understand? So it's not unique. If you recognize, if you're able to recognize, yeah, man, sometimes I am double-minded. I'm, You know, that that is, that's a big step. They say that, like, with um, anyone who's seeking to change or improve anything, they first have to recognize that there's something wrong. If they can't recognize, acknowledge, like, yes, because some folks will read this, I'm not double-minded, so on, so on, and everyone else can see it, but they can't see it. I would say maybe love that person in Christ, but also, you know, be firm about the truth. You understand? Speak the truth in love. You understand? But don't lovey w w down the truth. You understand? But speak the truth in love. It's, verse 9 says, Let the brother, the wendem of low degree, let the wisdom that's on a low degree, if you just start it, rejoice. So even a, a brother that says, brother, I like to be able to do this and that, but even on a low degree, you have to remember, rejoice. Joy is so very important. The Ethiopian eunuch even shows and demonstrates that joy. When Philip was snatched up, the Ethiopian eunuch looked around, didn't see Philip, but what did he do? Was he sad? Oh, my goodness, I don't know how I can move. No, he went his way doing what? The Bible says rejoicing. So we have to understand, let no man take your joy. You understand? Let no man. Some people say, well, how can I maintain my joy when so many things, you understand, are going, see, it's, it's what you worship. You understand? What you value. You understand? What you value. You can even pray to the Father that he will put in, in you a new spirit that you would value his things, not like you value these false things. If you can have trust in the Father to come to the Father in the name of Yeshua, you will send and ask. So it says, let that man ask, right? Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, nothing wavering. So the brother of a low degree, the wendim, or the ichit, the ichit, the it, you understand? Know um, it is it, it, it hit. It hits is for sister. It's not miss. It's a hit. Not a miss. It's a hit for the sister. Wendem for the brother it says, Make the Wendem of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Whoa. Yovas, 
Make the brother who's on a low degree still rejoice that he is exalted. You know what I'm saying? He is exalted. But the rich, in that he is made low. That one who is rich, you have to recognize, has to come down. Because if you're rich in the world, and, and that's the problem, because people, notice how it's talking about double minded and so talking about a brother on one hand, right? And then it's talking about the rich. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we, we can see this contrast. Because if one is rich in the world, you know what I'm saying? How hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. It doesn't say it's impossible. You know what I'm saying? But how hard is it? You know what I'm saying? Because, see, that rich one has to rejoice in that he is made low. He has to rejoice in, in humbling himself. Because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Really, as a flower of the grass, riches, riches pass away. You understand? Know so you have to recognize that riches, you know, um, here today, gone tomorrow. If he now values that money or rich or wealth or outer worldly things as somehow lifting up his, his sense of self, he is, he's like selling his soul. It, 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 that's, that's another level of selling your soul. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, that rich should rejoice that he is made low. Because as a flower of the grass, right, monies and he, if he's caught up in that, shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat. Judgments. But it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Now, you have to remember that the position that Yaiko, the brother of the Lord James, was speaking, you have to understand. You understand how the early church, it's almost like right now we as Rastafari, you understand? Many of us, the, the majority, could not be considered to be, quote, rich. You understand? In this struggle or sufferation in the worldly sense. There are ones who are, you understand, here and there, but overall, you understand, so it is the rich in the world who have persecuted and used money and financial means, you understand, to persecute the poor. You understand, the poor. You know something interesting with poor, bow, pure. You know that bow, pure, bow of the poor. You understand? Know to persecute the so-called poor. But John really says that we are, we are actually the rich ones. We're the rich ones. Not those who are caught up in this world, which he uses as a, as, as, as a, as a metaphor, the flower. How flower, you know, it, it has its time. Like, like this dispensation, this world system is having its time. But its time will pass. And if you put your value in that system of things, when it pass, so will you. You understand? Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You understand? It says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But still one who is blessed is one who is able to endure. That means be firm. You understand? Not give up. Now give up the spirit and the truth that you know. For when he is tried, when he is tried, he shall receive, he shall Kabbalah, the crown, the keter, the crown of life, which Adonai hath promised to them that love him, to those who love him. So let's just touch on a little love for a moment. Right? This is, this is going to be a catch-up a catch up sermon right here. You know, to catch up on a couple of a couple of important points. Like let's touch on love for a moment. Because everyone talk about love, 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 right? Well, here's a test of fellowship. Test of fellowship. This is a test of whether we are Wendemoch, whether we are brethren. First we might first we have to get our own house, our head and heart in order. To say our spirit and soul, in other words, in order, fellowship maintained by Christ's advocacy. My little children, these things write I to you, that ye sin not, First John 
chapter 2, that ye sin not, that you don't miss the mark. But it says, and if any man sin, if on any level that we know we should be living at this height, and we slip and fall, so to speak, and, 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 and we sin, we err, right? What are we to do? We're to remedy it by this process. If any man sin, we have an advocate. We have an advocate with the Abba, with the Father, Jesus Christos Tzadku. Jesus Christos Tzadik. What does that mean? The righteous. He is our righteousness. It's not about what we do. It's not about self-righteousness. We have to let go of that ego. And say, says, if any man comes after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. And all we can follow him is to learn of him. So we learn in spirit and in truth to think like he thinks. And therefore we can move and have that power in the world, you understand, like he has. You understand, he's already conquered the world. You have to recognize, he, all power in heaven and earth. You understand, but he's looking to the earth for faithful ones, brothers and sisters, who trust him enough, you understand, to recognize which direction to go with. It's the Bible. His message, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Yeshua HaMoshiach. He is our blameless example. You understand? He is that template for righteousness. You understand? So let's recognize that. So um, um, here in verse 2 it says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world or the sins of the whole world. So here's the key thing. Could we as Beta Israel, we can say, well, he came to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel, black.